Now, whether you want more people than just, you know, three plus you, I don't know. Well, and plus, who knows if they're going to cooperate? I don't know if they're going to cooperate. Yeah, okay. and and and, and it, it's it's going to be an ongoing project, which kind of changes directions as it goes. So at this point, I would basically just go slow and uh, just take one step at a time and see where it leads. Let me take a little detour from our Nietzschean based explorations. Why do I do it? I just feel compelled to address a much more basic issue that uh, has been roaming my classes and my shallow attempts to theorize about film and philosophy for a while. Now, why do I say I feel compelled? <laughs> I don't know about you, but uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, Charlie Kaufman and most of the films that he wrote or directed. And um, in being John Malkovich, there is this uh, one scene where John Malkovich comes to a Malkovich uh, comes to a meeting with a woman, and he says, "I felt uh, oddly compelled." <laughs> and he says it in such a way that from that point on, every time. I hear the phrase, somebody is compelled, I'm compelled. Somehow I cannot shake this um, delivery. So that shows you that uh, uh, filmmakers and uh, philosophers can dance around certain issues and think and uh, write and shoot and edit and then some hugely charismatic personalities appear and they just say one word. They are compelled. And that sticks, at least in my mind, uh, to the phrase, I'm compelled. And after a while, you don't know if you are saying this yourself or you are just trying clumsily to follow the delivery of uh, great actor John Malkovich. 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 Whatever. I felt uh, oddly compelled. <laughs> anyway. I am compelled to address the issue of uh, film and philosophy as two disciplines that sort of uh, uh, dance around each other and somehow uh, overlap in certain areas. And uh, I've been saying for years that actually there is a suspicion that maybe there are some strong connections between those two. And that maybe they actually both reach to even more basic layer from which the communication, visual and abstract, sprang. But what if we actually start to address or explore the issue a little bit more maybe reaching out first to those whom I met during my film philosophy documentary travels. Since the assumption is that we're going to be moving back and forth between one language and another, meaning between film and abstract thinking, it would be nice to zero in on some principles of translation, seeking if there are any mechanisms or insight in the process of translation that can be applied to the search of connections between visual and abstract. And I thought that uh, Gene Campbell from New York would be a person to start with because of her vast experience in translation and a solid philosophical background. I'm in New York State, upstate, oh. rural, and I'm I'm the second floor now, and I look out my windows, and all I see are trees. <laughs> okay. I really like that. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, so you take the phone, you keep it like this, not like this, vertical. Yeah, keep it horizontal. I mean, horizontal, yes, not vertical. Right. Horizontal. Right, right. And take the photos. And take either photos or, or videos, short. So you're going to get me a job here, huh? 
<laughs> yeah, you hired. You hired. I don't know. All right. I good. don't know who is gonna pay who, but you are hired. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah. so, so the second thing, uh, more important, is I'm really interested in language as such. Okay. Mm -hmm. You, by the virtue of your position, I don't know to what extent that kind of tra can travel, but you know, language is huge. Do you deal with uh, the the clarity of communication? What's your language forte? What does well, it mean? First language? of all, I I love the way you put your first question: the clarity of communication, because that is what I struggle with every single day. My real job has to do with translating. Cats are fighting. I need to stop them. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, That's so you're, okay. Uh, I have one kitty now, and I've often been wondering, you know, when cats howl at each other at night, what are they really doing? I would love to answer what is really happening with these animals, because they're not close to each other, yet they're interacting in a very vigorous way with the yowling you know so and is it just a territorial thing or what i mean yeah there is some language to be explored there is language to be explored there and so anyway my actual job is to translate a number of language from language to english professionally i can communicate in those other languages too but as a professional translator, I go from about five, six languages to English. Wow. Yeah. And there's a lot of interesting things interplay amongst these languages. Um, Which languages are those? Well, French, Spanish, German, Italian, Portuguese. Wow. Impressive. And then you have cousins. Like I have done some work, you know, with uh, Scandinavian languages because of relationship to German. I have my paper outline there, but you know, the imagination image, the Kant uses the imagination to make uh, the holding of images possible so that we can then know things cognized out of the images Jean graciously forwarded one struck me in particular so what do we have here in this image does it propose collapsed structure passage of time futility uh, a short story something was and it's no more the play of textures the harmony of tragedy or the elegance of disaster, passage of time, togetherness in despair. You do not need to be apologetic to be exploring these images because that is properly to do with ideas in the pure sense. There are quite a number of interesting and challenging points that one can find in Jean's paper. She writes, we may want to ask why those single words have many different meanings. It must ultimately stem from the basic requirements of communication and the tension between the universal and the particular. If every word had only one meaning, would it be reduced to a mere name, the referent of which was not accessible to everyone and thereby really condemning us to what Russell called knowledge by acquaintance? That basically means that there has to be a certain gray area that is actually the nitty-gritty of a translation process, the ambiguity of this process, and yet the necessity of making it as clear as possible can aid us later in 
trying to answer the question whether there is a way to move back and forth between visual and abstract. Probably these ideas are more fundamental than the images, but, you know, probably, probably. We will discuss yeah. that. We will discuss this that. This is I... another issue for your thinking camera. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. This is a topic to discuss. What is more foundational 